Let's analyze the phenomenon of ambient or environment light. Here is a simple scene with just a few objects and only one light source. It is the sun lamp and as you can see some of the areas of our scene are completely in shadow. If we render this scene we will get something like this. We can easily see the direction of the light. Here in this area our image is completely black as well as here because no light hits those surfaces. Some of the artists try to make those areas not black but a little bit lighter by changing the color of the shadows. We may sometimes hear that the shadows that are cast by the sun lamp should have a little bit of bluish tint. Well, that's not true, but let's see what happens if we give the shadow some color. Here I have purposely set the very bright color of the shadow to make the issues more visible. And that's the result that we would get. It looks a little bit nicer, but we have several issues here. In the areas where our image was completely black because of the shadows, because the light was blocked by some other objects like here or here, we got some bluish tint, but here the image remained black. This black color is not caused by the shadows. There are no shadows here. Nothing blocks the light in this area. This black color is caused by the diffuse itself. The light goes from here, so it simply doesn't hit the surface. The same applies to this area. And we have some other issues. Like in this setup, we cannot say if this monkey is lying on the floor or is hanging above this surface. So that's not the solution. Okay, let's now try to address at least some of the issues. Like it is possible to get rid of this black color and give it a bit of this bluish tint. When we take a look at the image that was rendered with black shadows, this is how the combined pass of it looks like. But let's take a look at the shadow pass. It is black not only in the areas where the light is blocked by some other objects, but also here and here, where this color is not caused by blocking by other objects. So we can invert this image, this shadow pass, multiply it by some color and add it back to the image. Let's see what happens if we do so. Here's our combined pass and this is the shadow pass. Let's invert the shadow pass and multiply it by some color. Let's give it this bluish but not so bright tint. And let's see what happens if we add this to the combined pass. That's our result. It doesn't look very nice but we can darken this color and it begins to look a little bit better but here we don't have any colors of this floor but we have the color pass. So we can try to multiply this modified shadow pass by the color pass and add the result to the combined pass. Let's see what happens. So we regained some colors here. Let's make this color a little bit brighter and that's the result. But wait a minute, what happens to the mouth of the monkey? This area here is completely flat. We regained some of the color but don't see any shapes here. So that's as well not the solution. Okay, so before I give you the proper solution, I will show you another wrong approach that can very often be seen. I have activated the ambient occlusion pass. It looks like this. Here we can very easily see the shapes. So maybe we could combine this one with this result and regain some of the shapes here. Let's see what happens if we simply multiply this result by ambient occlusion. That's the result and it looks much, much better. But there still are issues that are not that clearly visible here in this scene. When we for the moment forget about the areas that are in shadow but look at those ones that are exposed to the sun, we may notice that they have been darkened by multiplying our result by the ambient occlusion pass. Let's mute this note, unmute it, mute it again, and we see the differences here. It doesn't look too bad. And in this particular scene, we could get away with this approach. But generally, multiplying by the ambient occlusion should be avoided. We could try to limit the influence of the ambient occlusion only to the 
parts that are in shadow. We have the inverted shadow path that looks like this. So maybe we could use this as the factor of this node and see what happens. So now when we mute this node, we see that only those areas are influenced by ambient occlusion. And those ones that are exposed to the sun are not darkened. Let's unmute this node. And that's our result. I used several tricks here. And at the first glance, the result looks pretty decent. But this approach is generally wrong. It bases on the belief that the shadows have colors. In real world, when we look at the areas that are in shadow, we may see some color in it. And we may believe that it's caused by the color of the shadows. But in fact, this color has some other source. Even if we imagine the perfect situation where the sun is the only light source in the world, we know that the light doesn't go only straight from the sun, but it bounces off the objects. We have the sky that also can be treated as the light source. And in fact, the bluish tint that is present in the areas in shadow is caused by this light from the sky, the surrounding light, the ambient light, we can call it. So in fact, instead of trying to make our shadows bluish, we should provide the environment or ambient light source. And here in this setup, only the areas that are not lit by the sun directly are influenced by kind of ambient. But the areas exposed to the sun are not influenced by it. And it's generally wrong. And we have a very powerful pass that is called ambient occlusion. What is wrong with multiplying our image with the ambient occlusion? Well, ambient occlusion, as the name says, is how the ambient is occluded by other objects. It shouldn't influence the direct light at all. The lights, the light sources, add to one another. We should add the ambient to the direct light. But we should limit the influence of the ambient light with the ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion shouldn't influence the whole image but only the ambient. So we should take the ambient occlusion, multiply it by the color that we want our ambient light to be, and add it to the image. That's the proper approach. So let's do it all properly. We will only use the combined pass that in our case is lit only by the direct light. It looks like this. It doesn't have any ambient occlusion or environment lighting in it. And I will add the ambient light that I will give some color occluded by the ambient occlusion. So let's take the ambient occlusion and multiply it by some color. Or I should rather say, let's multiply the color of the ambient light by the ambient occlusion. It will give exactly the same result, but this better shows what we are actually doing. So when our ambient light is white and we multiply it by the ambient occlusion, it is equal to the ambient occlusion itself. But let's say that our ambient light should have some bluish tint. We should, of course, multiply one by the other. And now we can simply add it to the image. This way we are losing some colors, but it's not a problem. We can multiply this ambient light by the color. And that's the result that we get. So in this setup, the blue ambient light influences the dark areas, the areas in shadow, as well as the areas exposed to the sun. But because we are adding this, it doesn't darken the areas directly exposed to the direct light. Let's imagine the simple scenario, and this will show us why multiplying by ambient occlusion should be avoided. Let's imagine that here, in the mouth of the monkey, we have a very little light source, direct light source. If we multiply the result of direct light by the ambient occlusion, here, in this area, we would see some darkness, which shouldn't be present, because this area would be lit by this tiny little lamp. But when we use this approach, adding the ambient light or environment light to the result of direct light, we get the result that we want. There is some bluish tint here, here, and here, and of course in the areas in shadow, and we get much, much better feel. There are, however, issues here. We may clearly see that this monkey, the material of this monkey, have a bump map. Unfortunately, this bump is visible only in the areas that are lit by the direct light. Ambient light doesn't take it into account. 
So that's the problem. But probably, if I didn't tell you this, you wouldn't even notice. But there are scenarios where this issue is more visible, so we simply should be aware of this. So if the ambient occlusion and environment lighting passes are excluded from our combined pass, we can easily create the ambient light of the color that we like. We have to multiply it by the ambient occlusion and we get the result like this. Then when we multiply it by the color pass, we get this and this can be easily added to the combined pass so that this is our result. We can as well activate the environment lighting. If we set this option to white, this will look exactly the same as the ambient occlusion, so it will be useless, but we can use the sky color or sky texture and in this case, as the environment lighting pass, we would get something like this. So as you can see, the horizon color and zenith color are burned into this image. And now instead of using the ambient light multiplied by the ambient occlusion, which gives us this result, we could here replace this by the environment lighting pass. So let's do it and see what happens. That's our result, a little bit different. And if we used indirect lighting pass, which in this case we didn't, because it requires approximate gather method, we would as well be able to mix it into the combined pass by multiplying it by the color pass and then adding to the image. It's that easy to mix those passes in only because we used the intensity of one here in the diffuse panel. If we used different values here, we would have to take it into account here in compositing. When we decide not to exclude ambient occlusion and environment lighting from our combined pass, I would recommend not to use the multiply blending mode for ambient occlusion because of the reasons that I explained a little bit earlier. If we use the add blending mode for ambient occlusion, it's as if we created the ambient light of the white color. If we mix those passes in here in compositing and exclude them from the combined pass, those factors and blending mode here don't matter. But in many cases we will be using our combined pass for other purposes and then it's good to set those things here properly.